Hire International started in 2004 in Afghanistan. At the time, Lars and myself were working in Kabul. I was volunteering for the UN, and I realized that for every single project that was required, there were at least 10 to 15 people involved in different layers of decision-making and deliveries. And there was such a volume of services needed to support the United Nations at the time in Afghanistan. They needed services such as catering, they needed supplies, they needed procurement, they needed generators, they needed fuels. So we started RA International to respond and provide a one-stop shop for clients who wanted particularly difficult hybrid services in remote locations. And we did the first job, which was a $2,400 generator that was required by a client. And it was required in a very remote location, 3,000 meters above sea level. We now fast forward 15 years later, and RA is a company that has got over 2,000 employees. We have operated in 15 countries, delivering over $500 million worth of projects. The projects are ranging from infrastructure projects in Central Africa Republic, all the way to support projects in Denmark, which is slightly further away from our norm. But as a company that provides solutions for complex projects, we go where the clients want us to go. We've defined our space as remote site service providers. You know, we speak about remoteness as a geographical position, but also a political position. So whereas uh, a remote mine in the north of Sudan is geographically remote, Mogadishu, it's politically remote because of the conflict and the, the political disturbances that are there. We're one of the few that can actually operate in these ones, and we're definitely one of the only ones that can offer the full service breadth of what we do. This sets us apart from the competition, and that's also one of the reasons the United Nations recognizes us as an essential service provider. We operate across three service channels, uh, integrated facilities management, construction, and supply chain. Uh, so within integrated facilities management, we're either servicing infrastructure or we're servicing people through the provision of life support services. From a construction perspective, uh, we're building accommodation, commercial facilities, warehouses, uh, and infrastructure such as runways and roads. Supply chain activities, uh, generally what we're doing is procuring goods internationally and then using our global supply chain to then deliver these to the country of operation and then doing last mile logistics to site. Integrated facilities management makes up almost 70% of our order book. Uh, it's high quality revenue, it's the highest margin service that we offer and it's growing consistently. Uh, we sign these contracts on a long-term basis, generally two to five years. Working with these clients that we do in the countries that we do, we actually have to think about the element of trust as being paramount. The client trusts us to do the right job, they trust us to deliver on time, they trust us to deliver on budget, and they trust us to tell them all the different parameters that could change any deliverable within that project. You have to remember that in these areas, it's really critical for some of our clients, such as the UK MOD, they've made a commitment to the government, they've made a commitment to the local government they're working with, they've made a commitment to the, their own government, they made commitments to the funding that's come behind that. And it's our job to deliver responsibly to these commitments. We're there to ensure that not only are we getting the projects in on time, we're getting the projects right, and we're getting the projects within the parameters that they have set. And it's this trust that has enabled us to grow the company with the clients. The clients are actually taking us from country to country to support their needs. We've grown organically through our clients. The unique differentiator that ARI has always stood out is we do our research. We tend to go on the ground two years before a project is about to start. We don't just tell you how far it is looking at Google Maps, saying it's 600 kilometers. We drive the 600 kilometers, we check the borders, we check the potholes, we know when the rainy season is arriving, and we know the price of each item being delivered to that location by land, by sea, and by air. It is a very research-led services company because we're here to deliver a project where there will be no surprises for the client. We took a strategic decision to pursue the commercial sector, particularly the mining and oil and gas industry. In 2019 we acquired a catering company in Maputo that gave us the past performance needed to pursue this business. We also acquired a piece of land up in the north and we started to develop a camp structure there, knowing that bed space was needed for the liquid gas workers coming in. Cabo Delgado is a conflict area. It also is hampered by natural disasters, and on top of this, a COVID lockdown. But well, we persevered and we built our camp. 
landing us a contract worth $60 million uh, that we announced in, in August this year. So while having pursued the, the oil and gas and the mining companies for a while, they've recognized that what we can offer them as a one service solution uh, is exactly what they need. Uh, and the fact that we can do it in the most remote areas to, under post-conflict situations is also recognized as a strong point. This is one of the largest investments in, in Africa. Uh, we estimate that there will be a need for around 25,000 bed spaces in Cabo Delgado province. Our international is building the first super camp in the province. What we're normally asked to do for clients and you know what we're very good at is coming in and offering this one supplier model, which is constructing facilities, servicing those facilities, taking care of the people who, who live and work in those facilities, and then also assisting them with whatever their needs are through our global supply chain network. Uh, so we've been advocating this model for quite some time. Uh, we see it um, offering benefits to the customer regarding accountability and also cost savings. An example of the one supplier model is Donna Kelly, uh, who approached us asking us to construct them a facility and then also service that facility and provide life support services to their staff and the staff of their contractors through the two-year construction period in Eritrea. That contract was awarded in August and it's leading to a number of new inquiries from minerals companies that are looking for the same model. Sustainability is part of the company's DNA. It's in our culture. We started looking at the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals and we identified three of these where the company had a direct impact. We work with our customers to see how we can deliver together on these SDGs as well, in a way of changing their culture and their habits in how they implement their projects. The company has been a signatory to the United Nations Global Compact since 2008. In that, you produce an audit report for the United Nations. For the last two years, we've taken a step further and now produce a sustainability report. This is accessible on our website, and we encourage you to read it. It'll tell you exactly what we do and how we do it. It will also highlight the fact that we're doing a carbon footprinting and we did our first baseline year in 2017 and are now measuring ourselves against this, constantly improving. Because the company operates in remote sites, we use generators and diesel fuel. Now, this is something we tried to, to change by introducing solar power. And currently we're building the first fully solar powered building in Mogadishu for UNICEF. So we listed on AIM in June of 2018, and in two short years, we've transformed the business. At the time, we were bidding on contracts between one to $10 million on average. But today, our average contractual bid and the contracts being awarded are between 10 and $100 million. IFM revenue was around $75 million at the time of IPO. It's now 127 million. So our order book is now $185 million. And when we came to market in 2018, one of our strategic initiatives was to diversify away from the humanitarian sector to also include the government and commercial sectors. Uh, at the time, we had 9% of our order book representing government and commercial, and now that's up to 53%. At the time of the IPO, we were operating around eight countries. So far this year, we've completed projects in 12 countries, uh, and hopefully that list will expand by the end of the year. We're confident in the growth of the business going forward, as evidenced by that we increased our dividend by 25% earlier this year. Bringing the company up from the first $2,400 order to where we're sitting today with an order book of about $185 million is quite an achievement for the whole group. RA is growing in the humanitarian sector, we're growing in our governmental support work, and we're also growing in the commercial sector. We're delivering on our growth strategy, we're delivering profits every year, and we have fantastic contract momentum.